Vienna Secession Design Movement The secession is the most successful provocation by Viennese architects and artists. It blends early modernism and late Art Nouveau architecture like no other. The building's stern white cubes boast gold-plated laurel leaves, owls, and twirling lines, topped with a giant globe of golden laurel. Like the Wiener Secession movement spread across the city, Vienna's Art Nouveau gems light up in various parts of the town. To get the whole story and see different sites, consider embarking on a guided Art Nouveau walk with me. First, let's start with a brief history of the Secession design movement and its most famous representatives. All architectural movements throughout history have been spurred by societal shifts that demand a new style that better reflects how technology has advanced the practice and how people express their political, religious, and moral beliefs and practices. While some shifts occur over a period of several years, others are experienced as a sudden revolt. The Vienna Secession was undoubtedly the latter. At the end of the 19th century, a group of artists and architects aimed to explore what art should be at as it pertained to filtering global influences in a way that could introduce new modernism. Collectively, the secessionist sparked a new movement that wasn't characterized by any one style but held together through a Jugendstil or youth style, which was inspired by Germany's adaptation of Art Nouveau. The Viennese version also used curving lines and references to plants and nature but evolved to emphasize simple, geometric forms and decoration. A year after their founding, the group designed an exhibition to present their work and that of other international artists they favored. The display grew global attention and was praised for its innovation in contemporary arts. Architect Otto Wagner, 1841-1918, combined traditional styles and Art Nouveau influences. Later, architect Adolf Loos, 1870-1933, established the stark, minimalist style we see at the Goldman and Salich building. Eyebrows were raised when Luce built this modern structure across from the Imperial Palace in Vienna. 1909, and the Luce House marked an important architectural transition. Yet, the buildings of Otto Wagner may have influenced this modernist movement. Some have called Otto Kalman Wagner the father of modern architecture. For certain, this influential Austrian helped move Vienna from Jugendstil, Art Nouveau, into 20th century architectural practicality. Wagner's influence on the architecture of Vienna is felt everywhere in that city, as noted by Adolf Loos himself, who in 1911 is said to have called Wagner, the greatest architect in the world. Today you will see the best places to immerse yourself in the unique architecture of Vienna. This short list forms a small guide for art lovers. Let's start. Majolica House slash Otto Wagner. An apartment building in Vienna, the Majolica House, designed by Otto Wagner at the turn of the 20th century, emanates some of the most classic details of the Art Nouveau style. The name of the building derives from the flowing flower motifs on the tiled outside facade that embellish the place with beautiful shades of green, blue, and pink. An entire facade built of small ceramic tiles, also known as majolica. Other materials used in the exterior finishing include iron and wooden frames for the windows in a perimeter block and infill building type. Lion heads sit in relief on the overhanging eave, and the two complexes are separated by their zone of balconies. Wagner made this new style of architecture famous for its simple yet elegant design. Exterior walls were left smooth and flat, and windows typically became less ordained than in previous Viennese styles of architecture. In some fashion, the simple, clean look was meant to represent how clean and simple the apartment complexes were on the inside. Despite its rectangular shape, the beautifully maintained building is considered an Art Nouveau masterpiece. The apartment complex in the center of Vienna was initially rejected as hideous beyond measure. These apartments rest side by side and together form an incomparably unparalleled and detailed nearby is a second house. Simpler than these, at three Kosslergasse, said to have been the town residence of Wagner for a time. Tip. Visit on a bright day and take binoculars to fully appreciate the detail under the eaves and the balcony areas. Medallion House Known as the Medallion House because of its decor of gilded medallions by Wagner's student and frequent collaborator, Coloman Moser, this apartment block is adjacent to the Majolica House on Link Wienzile. Compared to the Majolica's design, where green, blue, 
and pink shades prevail, where gold is the master, and the decorations adorn not only the front facade but, given that the building is on a corner, the length of the other sides as well. The roof, visible from far away, features several sculpted heads, called the Criers or the Crying Women by Othmar Shimkowitz, who provided sculpture for other Vienna secession landmarks, including the angels topping the post Sparkus building. As one of Europe's prime Art Nouveau jewels, the medallion house prominently features on a 100 euro gold coin. Today, it houses a branch of an Austrian bank. I am happy to make interesting releases for you, and I will be grateful for your support of my channel. Subscriptions, likes, or comments will help me a lot. Secessionstbad, Secession Building There was a time in the early 20th century when Vienna was the center of the world for culture, the age of Gustav Klimt's art. This building represents the time, not only as a geographical location but also in its architecture and, no less notably, the Beethoven Frieze, painted by Klimt in 1902 as a commentary on Beethoven's Symphony No. 9. Artists were seceding from the conventional art world. While the only actual painting inside is the famous frieze, the building itself, designed by architect Joseph Olbrich, contains several features acting as a unique statement of intent, from the turtles that support massive plant pots on either side of the entrance to the great dome made from 2,500 gilt laurel leaves and 300 plus berries, that the Viennese were quick to christen, the golden cabbage. Olbrick wanted it to be seen as a dome of laurel, a subtle classical reference meant to celebrate, the triumph of art. Inside, the museum has a minimalist approach to portraying the exhibitions, allowing visitors to focus on the art. The atmosphere is calming and magical, encouraging you to stop and quietly immerse yourself in the surroundings. Photos are allowed. Tip. The audio guide is very useful here, it is much easier to sit and listen as you look at each section than reading explanatory notes. Karlsplatz Stadtbahn Station. The master of Viennese Jugendstil, Otto Wagner, was appointed architectural supervisor for much of the city's underground system in the 1890s, and the stylish pair of underground railway exit pavilions he designed next to Karlsplatz are among the city's most appealing buildings. Well known for their modern look, floral motifs, curving rooflines, and exposed steel framework, in keeping with Wagner's belief in architectural honesty, they've achieved the perfect melding of form and function for the architectural world. Having opened to the general public in 1899, the original old line was converted to the newer U-Bahn rail system in the 1980s. For this purpose, plans were made to destroy the old Stadtbahn station, however, a cry of outrage from the Viennese community saved the two pavilions. To make them function as part of the modern rail system, they were first completely dismantled, then reassembled on a structure that was seven feet taller than before. The two pavilions face each other, one is now a quirky cafe, the other hosts an exhibit on Wagner's most famous work, with a model of the architect's stunning church at Steinhof as its centerpiece. Tip. Around the Karlsplatz, you can also find the Grand University of Technology, St. Charles, Church, the Vienna City Museum. In the summer, Karlsplatz is a great place to sit under the trees of Russell Park. Palais Oyos. When Otto Wagner built himself a townhouse at Renwick 3 in the 1890s, it was clearly still a desirable residence. Now known as the Palais Oyos and occupied by the Croatian embassy, this early Wagner work is very much in the Ringstrasse style, with its elaborate wrought iron balconies and stucco decorations. Still, you can discern hints of his later work in touches such as the projecting cornice and the very fine reliefs on the upper floor. Despite its meteoric rise, the Vienna Secession changed over the years as its members began to focus on their individual pursuits and artistic interests. Eventually, internal disagreements and the increase in consumerism distinguished the movement. Regardless, the movement was a critical precedent that significantly contributed to the rise of culture in Austria throughout the 20th century. Its memory is cemented in the secessionist building, Klimt's artwork, including The Kiss, and Otto Wagner's Karlsplatz metro station. The movement is even considered a moment of cultural identity in Austria. In 2004, 100 years after the group dissolved, the country issued a cold collector's coin of 100 euros. The front featured the secession building, and the back featured a frieze by Klimt. While we may never see a more powerful and sudden jolt in the way that architecture transforms throughout time, 
We have the Vienna Secession to thank for opening the path for artists and architects to introduce modernism as we know it. That's all for today. See you next week.